In this video, you'll learn how to learn to open access, identify key components of the user interface including ribbon, tabs, groups, and the quick access toolbar, and you'll be able to see the different objects used by an access database including tables, queries, forms, and reports. I'm going to start with having access already open, and I'm going to, I've already created a student database that I'm going to use as an example. So I'm going to open that database on the menu on the left. So when we open database, when we open access, we see at the top we have the title bar, we have a, a menu at the top left hand corner, and this little area here is called the quick access toolbar that contains some shortcuts to items like the save button and the back button, and you can also customize that by adding other buttons that appear there as well. Now we do have the ribbon at the top of the screen with the file tab, and when I click on the file tab, it brings up this full screen where I can save and create new databases or open new databases or open existing databases. I can click back to get to the main tab and we see that the home tab has groups like the views and the clipboard and sort and filter. There's the create tab where we can create tables, queries, forms, and reports. We have an external data tab where I can import data from Excel or another access database or even text files or XML files that can be stored on my computer. And we can also export the data into different formats. And there's the database tools where we can do things like compact and repair the database, create macros, or create relationships between the tables, which is what we're going to be doing in a future video. So I'm going to click back on the Home tab. And you can see in this area down here at the bottom, under the ribbon, we really have two sections. So there's a navigation pane on the left, and this says all access objects right at the moment. So access has different objects that we can work with, mainly tables, which store data, queries, which allow us to pull information out of those tables, forms, which allow us to enter data in a more structured way, but we can really just enter data directly into the tables, and we have reports, which are ways to display the data or create reports off of the data based off of the queries. So in fact, if you wanted to be very simple about it, you could really just work with the tables or the queries and not really use forms and reports, but the forms and reports do make things a little bit easier. So I've got this very simple database. Let's say I look at the, some students in the table. I can double click on the students table. And we see that there's uh, a table is made up of rows and columns. The rows are called uh, records. So this is the record for me. This is my first name, my last name, my home street, city, province, postal code, home email, and a school email. And I'm looking at this particular table in what's known as data sheet view because it's a like a sheet that I can enter the data on. Now the first column is an ID field. It's just used internally by the computer to keep track of the records. And uh, I can switch into the design view by clicking on this area in the top left hand corner on the home tab under the views group. I can click that down pointing arrow and switch to design view. Or if I just click on the little button that looks like a pencil and rulers, I can click on that. And now I'm in design view. Now when you're in design view, this is how you can construct a table by adding field names, setting the data type, and maybe an optional description which would appear when you're typing in the data. And if I switch back to the data sheet view, I'm going to, let's say, I put my cursor in the next blank record. Then at the bottom under first name, I can look down at the status bar and it says student's first name. That's where the description appears. And we can see also down at the status bar, we have a record navigator where I can go next and previous back to the first record, there's the next record, or there's the last record, and I can search. So just imagine a much greater and more complicated database where I had maybe thousands of records that I'd need to search for. The next item that we're going to take a look at, and it's really good to have it in access to close the things that you just looked at. Otherwise, when you do something else later, it might have a conflict when that database is open, so or when that table is open. So a database, this database file we have now, is a comprised of tables, queries, forms, and reports. Now, in order to make this very simple database, I'm not going to get into the design of it right now, but I'll just explain that we have students that take courses. So we have a list of courses, so a course code and a course title and the description that might be in their course calendar. And then I have, uh, because my students table has short forms for a province, another little bonus is the fact that I have a table that contains all the full names of the province. So if I were ever make a query or a report and I want to see the name of the province, not just its two-letter code, then I need this extra table that tells me that the letters O-N stand for Ontario and the letters N-T stand for Northwest Territories. So maybe if I was from a different province and I wasn't familiar with all these other short forms, then I would need that full name. We also have enrollment. So we have students and they take a course 
And when a student is connected to a course, it's called an enrollment. Now, an enrollments table like this is very simple, and it was always be described. It's always described as being kind of a, a long, narrow, uh, a, a long but narrow table because it's only made up of the student ID field. So later we'll talk more about ID fields and primary keys and all of that kind of information. But this was just an overview to give you the kind of things that you'll see in a database. Now I have already populated some of the data here. So we have students and we have courses. And I have some queries here. So let's see, let's see I want to run a query that shows me all of the student information for all the students. So I double click on it and it shows me last name, first name, and a course code. Now, actually, this is a caption that I've had to fix later on. So here's a list of, you know, I've enrolled in CP102 and Biff is enrolled in CP102. All the students are enrolled in CP102 and some of them are taking business courses and some of them are taking biology or technology courses. When I look at the design view, this is how a, a basic query is structured and I'm pulling information from two different tables and that information is shown here. So we'll talk more about queries in a later video as well. If I look at the email list, I can just create a different query that shows me the first name, then the last name, and their email address. And it's kind of cut off there, so I can just make that column a little bit wider. Or I can auto-fit it by double-clicking. Makes it wide enough for me to see. But now that I've actually made that change here, if I try closing the table, it's going to say, do I want to make changes to the layout? Yeah, that's fine. All I did was made the column wider just for when I look at it, so it's really not a big deal just say yes and that way the next time I open it I'll automatically be able to see the full email address. The other thing I have here is a query that specifically only shows me the students in Business 111. So I'm going to double click on that, runs the query, and I see that I do only have two students populating this particular table, or sorry, uh, in that course. And I can again explain, uh, expand that one a little bit. So last name, first name, home email address. If I really wanted to I can click and drag in some cases, there you go, you have to be careful about it. See how I can drag first name in front of last name? And that changes the order of the query. And so I can do that kind of thing in design view, but I, or sorry, this is datasheet view again. So I'm looking at a query in datasheet view. And to switch into design view, I can click on the design view button. And this is what the query looks like and where I specify that it is only the students from business 111. And then I can switch back up at the top here into the query datasheet view. And I'm back in datasheet view and I can close the query and of course I made the column a little bit wider just so I could see the email address and I'm, that's fine to save that. Now down at the bottom we have forms so if I wanted to add a new student I can go to my add student form and we see here all the fields that are necessary for me to enter the student info and down at the bottom access has added this for me when I created the form this tells me which courses I'm enrolled in so now I can add a student and I can actually add other courses for this particular student, but in, this is a very simple layout, so I'd have to know the course ID and not just the course code. But there I could create students, and I can click on this button here to go to a new blank record, that's enrollments, and then down at the bottom, see it says one of four, because there are four students. This is where I can create a new student record. This is where I create a new enrollment record. And if I look at courses, there's a simply, I've modified this one from the default. This allows me to create a new course, and I can say, you know, this one could be CP400, and that could be uh, special topics. And then I can simply add a calendar description. And now I have nine courses to be determined. And I can close that. And you'll notice that it doesn't ask me to save anything. When you save a database, I'm sorry, when you finish typing in something into a field, it automatically gets saved. So that data has already been saved, and I enter that in the form. And of course, if I go into my courses table where the data li uh, lives, I can see here that CP400 is a special topic that I've already added to this table. So we can see that the basic data always comes from a table, but I can use queries and forms to modify that data. And well, queries shouldn't by default modify the query, but we can have different types of queries. That's more of an advanced topic. And then down here, just show you reports. If I want an email report, just another nicely formatted way to see their name and their email address. Or maybe I want to see the list of all the students in Business 111. And again, here is information that I pulled directly from a query. And I can list the BU 111 student list. There's Robin and Peppy. And there's the report, just a little bit more nicely formatted, different formatting with the date and the time. And of course, all this is customizable. So that's what it looks like in an access database. We're working with tables, queries, and maybe even forms and reports to enter 
the data and get some information that allows us to answer questions and find out more about what we're working with. Thanks and have a great day.